Mediterranean Marinas, Part 5, Eastern Med. This episode moves away from the nearest places to keep your boat and be able to sunbathe on Christmas Day. Using the latitude of uh, Gibraltar at 36 degrees north as a baseline, you can see that it's possible to keep it in places like Tunisia, southern Sicily, Malta, southern Greece, Cyprus, and what is, in my opinion, the most delightful and lovely cruising ground in the entire Mediterranean, Turkey. I found this area to be by far the best place I ever visited in the entire Mediterranean Sea. The people, the simple rules and regulations, the superb anchorages and the very well-run marinas make it by far the nicest cruising place I've, I've seen in the area, in my opinion. Best of all, Turkey is outside the European Union, so you're not governed by the 9180 days rule and you can keep your boat there for five years before you have to make a day sail to Greece in order to restart the clock. Not all the marinas and ports are marked on this map um, are large enough or suitable to keep a 12 meter boat permanently, but it does give an indication of how well developed the Turkish boating industry actually is. Broadly speaking, the price to keep a 12 meter boat in a very modern marina in Turkey is going to cost between two and five thousand pounds sterling, UK pounds sterling a year. The prices seem to vary enormously, but actually the real problem is the availability of permanent berths. There are cheap flights to Bodrum or Anatolia for, I don't know, from 50 quid, I guess, each way. And the flight from the UK takes around four hours. Once you arrived, in addition to the marinas, there are stacks of anchorages with bars and restaurants on the nearby beach um, who've installed their own pontoons for you to park on whilst you imbibe. The safe, secure anchorages are out of this world beautiful sometimes and often surrounded by ancient ruins. Historically, there's far, far more to see in Turkey than in Greece. The Turks take the preservation of their antiquities very seriously, unlike their neighbours. Wonderful Roman and Byzantine ruins to explore almost everywhere. You're only allowed to scuba dive with a registered Turkish diver accompanying you in order to stop you nicking stuff off the seabed. And the seabed is just covered in old bits and pieces. If you have dive tanks on board when you arrive, then they will be sealed and you can't use them until you leave. Once a year, you need to get a pump out certificate and anyway, to discharge your heads into the beautiful, clean, clear waters of these pristine anchorages is totally unacceptable. The waters are truly unspoiled. The Turkish officials will check you have, will check out your holding tank installation. They relate the size of the tank to the amount of people on board and they issue a card which has to be stamped each time you pumped out. Whilst European sailors cruise the area all summer moving from one anchorage to the next, most in winter retreat into a marina and berths become difficult to find. The opposite from the western med where it's harder in summer to find a marina berth than it is in winter. Working from north to south in Turkey, the first marina of importance is Bodrum, and I confess I liked the place the moment I arrived there. The, mo the marina has a full range of facilities and the town outside is really nice. Within the marina there are bars and restaurants and the town's on the doorstep. It's an excellent place to cruise the Turkish coast from. The only bad thing is that it's a major tourist resort but then in summer you'll be off sailing elsewhere down the coast, mainly anchoring in gorgeous bays. The weather in winter is similar to the Costa del Sol at the same time of year with highs of around um, 14 to 18 degrees in winter daytime and 10 degrees at night. Pleasant most of the time, but it can and does rain. There are cheap flights to Bodrum Airport from the UK as it is, of course, a major holiday resort. 
The price of an annual berth for a 12 meter boat is around 4,000 euros a year, which equates to around 3,200 UK pounds a year. They're sensible, serious people running the marina, and I think your boat would be very well cared for. A little further south is Marmaris Marina, where a 12 meter berth is around 2,665 euros a year, or 2,225 UK pounds a year. This is a really big harbour shared by tourist galettes. I used to back up to the quay where the galettes are in this picture, and the cafe just across the path used to bring me a coffee and croissant every morning free of charge, just because they were friendly and welcoming. I mean, it was a really good cruising memory. This is, the, this is a full-on holiday town with a li lively nightlife in Bar Street, which is home to open-air clubs and music venues. It's very much a holiday resort, but that means that lots of the facilities in town are very much geared up to English visitors. This marina is owned by a group called Setur Marinas, who own 10 marinas along the Turkish coast, and apparently all have more or less the same sort of price structure. Part of the deal is that you can stay for up to a month in any of their other marinas free of charge. The deal also includes free use of the travel lift and up to six months on the hard free of charge. They have an excellent website and you should Google Setur Marinas, S-E-T-U-R Marinas. Their list of bases includes Kaz, Finica and Anatolia. There's another international group uh, which have three marinas in Turkey called um, De Marina Marinas, who also have marinas in Greece, Croatia and Dubai and other places. That's spelled D-M-A-R-I-N-A dash marinas. Um, their annual tariff for a 12 meter boat is around 5,000 euros a year or 4,200 UK pounds. And they offer seven nights free at any other D Marina and a 40% discount after that. The next marina further south is Fetier, ECE Marina. And it's much, much more modern than the previous two being purpose built. And I think it's fair to say Fetier is probably a more sophisticated place uh, in both marina and town area. Its rate for a 12 meter boat is 4,500 a year, which is around 3,200 UK pounds. It has truly excellent facilities, and like all Turkish marinas, you call them on VHF when you get close, and normally one marinero in a dinghy will come out to help you maneuvering into your berth and another will appear on the pontoon to take your lines. I get the feeling Fetier is very geared up to having boats left there all year round with their owners flying out um, to go sailing. It has a high quality hotel next door and the town has a vast array of tourist shops and restaurants but it's less full on than Marmaris and Bodrum. It's also the further south of all Turkish marinas. The nearest airport is Dalaman Airport and it has a, that has a vast amount of flights from the UK and the rest of Europe. A taxi to the marina is going to cost about 20 quid for a 45 minute ride. ride. I like the place a lot. The next marina to the south is Kaz, uh, which is a Seto marina. It's set in a natural bay, protected in every direction except the north, from where I think a swell could come in with strong winds from that direction. It's a purpose-built rather than a marina in the, an existing port. It's got a large haul-out area, but it is some distance from the nearest town, although it, that doesn't stop it from being a tourist resort. For a 12-metre boat, it's uh, 3,950 euros a year or about 3,200 pounds. The bad news is the airport um, is about 150 kilometers away. You can fly into Dalaman 
uh, either direct or via Istanbul, and then get a taxi to Kaz, costing around 60 UK pounds, and it's going to take a couple of hours. It is a long way from the town, but it's probably the warmest in winter of all the Turkish marinas. There are some more small marinas along the coast until the frontier with Syria. All the marinas I've mentioned have bars and restaurants inside them as well as haul-out facilities with deals way, way below UK prices. There are local chandlers selling mainly Turkish products, but I suspect their anti-fouling is better in their waters than UK products. I suppose one big issue is actually getting your boat there. From Gibraltar, it's around 1,600 nautical miles, assuming you make the passage in relatively short hops. Probably take you much of the summer, although Louise and I used to cruise down to Malta from Jib in a couple of weeks. If you're interested in the route we took, um, then go to michaelbrandt.com and in the little blocks at the top of the page, click on Cruise 1995 HTM. I can't think why it's called that, as we did it in 2015. The Turkish health systems, both the private one and their national health system, are excellent and incredibly inexpensive. High quality at really low costs, and therefore health insurance is pretty reasonably priced. I consider the time I spent cruising in Turkey as the most memorable and interesting of all my time in the Mediterranean. Bar none. Beautiful clean waters, very inexpensive drinks in a bar. A pint of local beer is going to cost you about one euro fifty, just over a quid in UK money. Um, and despite being a Muslim country, the supermarkets all sell wine and spirits and beer. And the local raki, which is incredibly inexpensive, is delicious. Uh, if you like pasties, which uh, I do actually. A meal for two in a reasonably priced restaurant is going to be about 15 euros, 10, 12 quid. I'm beginning to sound like a travel agent, so I'm going to stop. But if you want to keep your boat in the sun, well, if it were me, thinking of taking my boat to Turkey, I'd get a cheap charter flight, fly out there for a week, maybe hire a car or take the inexpensive taxis and view a few of them, the ones without long waiting lists. Next door to Turkey are the Greek islands, from Kos, which is just an hour away sailing from Turkey, but without a marina, or to Rhodes, or to Crete, or to Corfu. I'm one of the few people in the world who didn't fall in love with sailing around the Greek islands. I found the officialdom simply awful and unfriendly. The annual charges for the cruising license which you must have in order to sail your boat in Greek waters, is excessive. And generally, the facilities in the marinas are not particularly good, and the food is awful. So, well, you can guess I'm not a fan. The price of the Greek cruising permit for a 12-metre boat is around 1,200 a year. That's just over 800 pounds, just to be allowed to be in Greek waters. Anyway, there's a marina in Rhodes that you can park up in annually for 4,250 euros, but to that you have to add in a fee to every, for everything, including water and garbage disposal. There's a 20 euro fee for connecting the water supply and another 20 euros for connecting electricity. Then you have to add the 1,200 euros um, cruising tax making an annual total of 5,450 euros a year, uh, which is roughly 4,550 pounds sterling to be in that marina. My memory of that place is that like most Greek islands, it's a full-on holiday resort with the most amazingly high prices for basic stuff like coffee and beer. I wouldn't be le comfortable leaving my boat here. The marina's okay, but I'm not sure they'd look after it when I'm not there. The airport is 30 minutes by taxi or local bus. Then there's Crete, which, as you can see, is below the latitude of Gibraltar and which should ensure better weather in winter. 
there's a marina in Agios Nicolas, if that's how you say it in Greek. Um, I stopped there once on my way from Suez to France and it was quite good news. The officials were courteous and helpful and apologetic in having to demand I buy a cruising permit even though my next stop was to be Malta. Exceptionally exceptional as most Greek officials are pretty unpleasant. The marina's fine for a visit, but I'm not sure again how well they'd keep an eye on your boat. Better than roads, I imagine, and it would probably be possible to find a local professional to check it out for you. Keep an eye on it. The price of keeping a 12 meter boat here is um, 2,500 euros a year, to which you've got to add the annual cruising tax of 1,200 to make a grand total of 3,700 euros. It's got a lift out area and the harbour is well protected in the middle of town. The airport's about 70 kilometres away and it's going to cost you 70 euros roughly for the taxi ride. And that's it really. Yes, there are other so-called marinas in Crete and um, one that is described as perhaps the worst in the world and whilst that by another cruising yacht person like me. And whilst they're all fine um, to be visiting while cruising, you wouldn't want to leave your boat there unattended. On mainland Greece, there is one reasonable marina at Kalamata, where a 12 metre berth is going to cost 4,600 euros a year, plus 1,200 for the cruising tax, making a grand total of 5,800 annually, or, or 4,800 pounds a year. The major airport of Kalamata is only uh, eight kilometres away and it's served by all the budget airlines from the UK. It's got a lift out area, a nice bar and restaurant, although I'm not certain this is open in winter always. Uh, the pontoons are concrete which worries me slightly as an in blow. If the sterns drag back to concrete rather than wood then yeah, it's not going to improve your fibreglass. It's right beside the town and if you're in love with the Greek way of life, then this is a possible contender. Before leaving the Eastern Med, there is the island of Cyprus, which is positioned to the south of the Gibraltar latitude and a good place to visit in winter. Cyprus is still split, split in half, the northern section being part of Turkey and the southern part is in the EU, except for the British air base in uh, a place called Larnaca. There are several small boats, harbours in northern Cyprus, but no actual marinas. That's the Turkish part. In the south, there's a marina at Limassol, which is a new development right in the middle of the town and appears to be very well run and organised place. The price for a 12 metre boat annually there is 7,500 euros a year although their website indicates um, a deal like six months for the price of four. So I guess they're having problems in attracting yachts at the current price, which equates to 6,500 UK pounds for your 12 metre boat for a year. The airport is at Larnaca, which is about a 70 kilometre um, taxi ride away and is going to cost you around 50 euros. EasyJet and BA fly into this huge airport. There's been a marina in Limassol for decades and the staff of the new marina are experienced and highly professional. Um, the town is trying to modernise itself and parts of it are still scruffy whilst other areas are actually rather smart. And of course the Republic of Cyprus is part of the EU so you'd be subject to the 9180 day rule and you'd have to take your marina out of the mar out of the area for 24 hours every 18 months just like every other EU marina. Several members of my family have second homes in the Turkish Cyprus northern part of the island and absolutely adore it and spend a considerable amount of time in winter there enjoying the absolutely lovely climate and messing about with boats. I think the main problem I would have with keeping my boat here 
is the relatively limited cruising ground. You can sail all around the island, of course, and there are some nice anchorages and fishing ports to both the north and south sides of the island. But the nearest friendly, indeed safe country, is Turkey. It's a 60 mile sail from the port of Karina in northern Cyprus to Chusku in Turkey. In the next episode, I'm going to look at the marina possibilities in the central Mediterranean area, which is sort of Malta, Sicily, Tunisia, Corfu, and so on. Um, I hope to publish a book with all this information um, that's in this series, and I'll let you know when that's happened. It'll, it'll go on my channel, uh, gentlesailing.com, where you can download it digitally. If you feel like subscribing to my channel or giving it a thumbs up, then I'd be grateful as it helps with my YouTube promoting. But if you don't, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Thank you for watching. Um, hope you've enjoyed it a bit. Bye. So far, French Canal Route to the Mediterranean has sold over 2,700 copies. And the, the gentle sailing route to the Mediterranean, that's down the outside coast, has also sold over 1,850 copies so far. If you want a copy of any of my sailing books, then they're available as instant downloads from gentlesailing.com, all one word. Or if you want my articles and descriptions about sailing, uh, you'll find them at michaelbrandt.com.